Hello. Hi, guys. It's always such a weird start to the live. Oh, there's already 50. Oh, 99 people. Hi. A lot of Smallville fans, I'm assuming. How you guys doing? Um, so, as you might have seen, uh, Kristen will be coming on soon. I told her I was jumping on a bit early so she might join us. Um, and hopefully I can figure this out because I've struggled before to have people join me. So yeah, I copied some questions from Twitter, but you can send questions on here for Kristen or myself, uh, for both of us. Um, I was told I could actually press on the question and it would come up on the screen. Hi. Hello, Miss Random 101. So once uh, Kristen jumps on here, I'll try to invite her. Hmm. Okay, not here yet. <clears throat> Let me just see if, if I, okay, question. If I put this on airplane mode so no one calls me, will I lose you? Hello? It's okay, Frankie. There's a dog barking. Um, so if I put this on airplane mode, will this affect the live stream? Hi. Anyone have an answer? Probably. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. Hopefully nobody calls me. Okay. Uh, let's see. There she is. Hopefully that worked, Tristan. I sent you a... Oh, it's connected. Hi! <laughs> There's a doggy back there. Yes. Frankie, say hi. Hello. Are your kitties there? They're somewhere in the house. I closed the door. So they <laughs> How are you doing? Good. I mean, you know, considering you. Yeah. Considering. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's such a transit. I mean, as actors, we often have a lot of free time. So I guess yes. it's not that different, but we do have the ability to have other activities and now we don't like what's been the biggest struggle for you <laughs> uh, I don't know I I guess for me it's living in a pandemic I, I mean it mm -hmm. changes the way that I feel about the world there's constant anxiety and the nerves is terrifying and my life itself hasn't changed that much it's just the feeling of life has changed a lot Right, and feeling confined to a space. Which I don't mind. I honestly introvert here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And you have a great place. I, I uh, yeah. it's really nice and cozy and beautiful. It's cozy. Yeah. And I've got to finish my schoolwork, which is hard to do, but it's... where are you at with that? Because you've been working on a degree, right? For a yeah. while. Many years, Laura. <laughs> um, no, it's gonna take a while. Oh. Uh, to get it done, but I'm finishing a semester right now. They've extended a lot of deadlines um, and due dates because of COVID. So right. that makes it, this, I mean, it's nice to have that option for things, but yeah, I, I'll get there one day. I'll go to Kingston and graduate. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you will. I mean, you do everything that you put your mind to, you do. Like, I'm always so impressed by you and all the things that you achieve and, and the amount of reading that you do and the knowledge you absorb. I mean, you were, we were texting, what, last week? And I was like, I need the, the books Book. and suggestions because you read so much and I'm terrible at it. So I, I got three of the books you recommended. Are they there? No, it's going to take like... 10 years. 10 years, yeah. which is fine because, you know, I'll read them later. Yes. Well, it's hard when you're... Like m my experience of you is that your mind is a, is a bit racy. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard yeah. to focus. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crazy at all. I didn't say that. I said racy. But racy. see, that's what my mind turned it into. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's true. And I mean, are you, you're not at all like that. Are you? You're very focused and you can stay grounded and, and you're not racy really. Do you, do you, question a lot of things mm -hmm. about yourself or what you're doing like mm -hmm. or you just always but I think I have a stop mechanism 
So I don't spiral too much. And I think that's the difference between having anxiety, like diagnosable anxiety and not. I think a lot about things and, but I, I can just be like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I, I'm not going to keep going down this tunnel. I'm going mm -hmm. to distract myself, move my mind in another way. This isn't helpful or it's not going to, you know, make me do the thing I'm doing right now. So yeah, I'll stop. <laughs> That's good. Maybe you could teach me how to do that. Okay. I'll try. <sighs> Over, I guess this live, we'll just do it now. <laughs> no. Yeah. So this is, is this your first live? Yes. Or, well, I'm honored. <laughs> it's very bizarre. Only you. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's definitely strange, but it's fine. There's people talking to yes. us and everything. So, um, guys, if you're watching, um, send questions in the question box. Uh, and then a little later on, I'm going to go in there and select a few, and then we can both, it'll apparently pop up. And we can both read those. But uh, let's, let's talk. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, so... Obviously, we work together on Smallville. Yes. Um, we barely ever worked together on Smallville. Yes. Let alone saw each other. No, we we had, I think, one scene together. Yeah. And that, that was, was about it. I hated that scene, not because of you, but because of what I had to do. I know, I know. It was, yeah. it was frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating as, I mean, we can get it, we can get into the female perspective on a lot of this stuff, which I'm sure we will at some point. Yeah. But um, you started acting when you were... Young, but yeah. like a child. No, I was 17. Well, I mean, yeah. I was a child. Yeah. Um, but I was in 12th grade when I started acting professionally. Mm -hmm. um, you were younger than that. You were a bebe, weren't you? Uh, I, I was, there's a dog barking. I was 13. Yeah, that's um, But I mean, we were both very young in the teens trying to break into an industry or, or at least trying to do something that we love. Did you have a lot of obstacles that you came up against um, because we all know now that you're an executive producer on Burden, which we'll get into and is awesome. Yeah. Um, but what were some of the things like, did you, did you know right away you wanted to do this or was this something you were just sort of finding out? I loved acting as a kid, you know, like I was the, the one who got people together and put on performances, you know, either it was plays or dance shows or basically find the younger children and force them into some sort of a performance. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that, that was my, my thing. And I loved doing that. But I, and I loved acting in high school and I took every class, you know, I'm a terrible singer, but my parents put me in everything. I like singing class, dancing class, musical theater, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so I loved it. But it never was a career option. And if I, you know, I was very lucky. And if I hadn't got a job right away, I don't know that I would have pursued acting as, yeah. as a career. Yeah. And what was that first job? A show on the CBC called Edgemont. Uh, I'm familiar because I watched it. Did you? I did. <laughs> I don't think I ever told you that. No. But I did. You must um, have that you're right in that age group, I guess. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, you're a little younger than me. Yeah. So it was a Canadian project as well. I loved it. Yeah. And I, uh, so, were you doing, at, towards the end of Edgemont, is that when you started on Small World? So, you were doing both. I did both. So, I worked on Edgemont. Uh, at, for some reason, Warner Brothers and Smallville agreed to be second to Edgemont. Which is crazy unheard crazy. of yeah and so I we finagled it with Edgemont and I would work weekends on Edgemont and I would work during the week on Smallville so I'd go back and forth and do both of those things you were how old at that point seven I started Smallville when I was what I got it when I was 18 I think and so I started when we were when I was 19 so 2001 2001 right after I graduated I mean off the bat that's that's success right away and like you said you okay, hadn't hadn't had that you wouldn't have continued which sort of fate aligns people wanted to see you in this industry and to see what you could do which is and even now so producing and, and all of the stuff you're doing like so I've been starting to get into that we've talked yes. about this at conventions yes. and panels um how did you transition into the producing side of this industry and what was it that made you decide to do that was it brought to you or did you pursue it 
I decided a while ago that I wanted to transition out of being in front of the camera. And that, God, that was a lot of years ago at this point. Um, and I didn't quite know how to do it. I started a production company. We made a short film. I mean, that was so long ago now. Um, we funded it ourselves. We did everything ourselves. And then, um, and I kept pursuing that, you know, came out and pitched shows and blah, blah, blah. And nothing really came of it. And I ended up getting, being offered Beauty and the Beast. And I ended up taking it, which moved me to Toronto. And I, I thought it would be a, possibly a good opportunity to start building into producing. And so I mm. tried to be super involved in that show, which was the opposite of Smallville, which I think was probably your experience too. We were very, we got our scripts, we set our lines, we went home and that's all that we did. And, and so I yeah. didn't want it to be like that. And so I worked with the showrunners and talked to them and sent notes for the first time in my career. Um, As, and, you, and you weren't a producer at that point. I wasn't, I became a producer on, a yeah. Uh, season was it the last season? I can't remember. Someone will know better. 2016. Uh, uh, I, I, that's what it says online. And you believe everything you read online, right? Yeah, definitely believe everything you read online. Um, but yeah, so that was that. And then after that show ended, I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm not auditioning. I'm not doing anything. And I met with E1, which you've worked with E1. I've worked with E1. For those of you who don't know E1, they're like a distribution and production house in Canada, probably yeah. our biggest. They function like a studio. They can put money in uh, so that you E1 can... did bit Exactly. Um, and, and yeah. Just and bit. also E1 did uh, Saving Hope, I think, too. Yes. Eric's yeah. show. Yeah. So I met with E1. They sent me a bunch of projects and I went through them and I picked one that I thought was interesting. And then uh, I met with the creator, Brad Simpson, and also Lynn Cody, who's a fantastic Canadian writer. And I liked them. And so we just pitched to the remaining. So for everyone who's listening, <laughs> we have really four doors to pitch shows to. That's it. Compared to like, what, 70 something in, in the United States? Yeah. So they already pitched to one person. <laughs> so we pitched together for the three more doors. And the CBC ended up taking it on, which was huge and amazing. Uh, that was a long first of all, sure. having, no, that, that's great because having the opportunity to have a plethora of options in front of you, like you did through E One, and being able to choose the project that you believed in—I mean, that that's always been my goal. I think that's a lot of actresses' goal, yes. um, goals because as women, we 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 crave more. Uh, to, to be more involved in the, I mean, every actor, not, I don't want to just say women, yeah. but based on the experiences we might've had on Smallville, I think even more so after the fact, we were like, I want to control the content I'm putting out there okay, yes. and how I'm coming across. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just a shift. Well, I just, I can't crazy yeah. over it. Yeah, uh, I think, well, for you too, you've been doing that a lot through a more indie route, which is tough, man. And I commend yeah. you for pursuing it so intensely. Um, I actually want to talk to you about something when we go offline. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so anyway, I adore you. I think you're amazing. You motivate me. Even on our panels, listening to you talking about taking control of your career and, and, and the, the path you choose to take, I think that has sparked a lot in me as well. And I want to continue doing that, especially after my last short film that I produced. So. You're awesome. Um, <laughs> anyways, so we basically cover all the stuff. I Oh, I wanted to ask you, what was oh, your yeah. most embarrassing story from the industry that you're willing to share? Embarrassing story? Like something, oh. someone, whatever. I you don't. You're hair, so I keep touching mine. I know. I don't know. It's the thing <laughs> I do. If I'm on set, I try not to do it. But otherwise, <laughs> I do it. I like braid it, tie it up, untie I didn't, it. I didn't wash mine for you. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I went for a run, so I washed my hair. Okay. Um, <laughs> embarrassing story. I feel like I'm always embarrassed, but I can never think of an embarrassing story. How are you always embarrassed? Because I always I do stupid things, and I feel embarrassed a lot. I mean, I, I, I do, I understand that. I don't understand that knowing you, but you never had um, like an audition or 
a situation on set or even outside of this industry that you laugh at now, but at, in the moment was like, it's okay, it's like okay, I can't think of something at the, this precise moment, okay. but if I do, I will tell you. Maybe I've blocked okay. them all out. Laura. I mean, it's Maybe very hard. <laughs> <It's just laughs> section in my brain. <laughs> I'll dig into that another time. Okay. Uh, so we got a bunch of Twitter questions when I asked people. There's about 1,400 people on here right now. Oh, wow. Great. Hi, guys. Um, so do you want to do some of the Twitter questions that I've written down? We also have a fun speed round thing that I've been doing. We had Michael. Yeah, on. whatever you feel like doing first. Wait, let's do the Twitter questions first. Okay, so Twitter questions. Um, Brienne1017 asked if you were... Uh, if you were asked, would either of you guest star on the new Lois and Clark show? I mean, it depends on what, what the role is always. Yeah, it's always it weird. weird. Aren't, isn't, in, okay, but isn't Smallville one of their, uni, what are they? Alternate, alternate time, what are they called, peoples? Alternate timelines? I don't know, someone knows. Um, but we, how could we be on it if we're from a different timeline? You know, I don't understand any of the, the stuff, that world. I mean, even the infinite of cri crisis of infinite earths thing. I mean, yeah. I had trouble oh. understanding that as well. But it seems like our Lois and Clark are in that, in one of those universes. So if you or I showed up, we'd like, wouldn't that be strange? The world would implode. I think so. so. We'll just say we don't think that's possible. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Yes, yes. Danny underscore Boudreaux, which of the characters that you have played is most um, like you in real life? Most like your real life personality? Uh, probably Joanna for me. I'm not as I'm not as intense as she is at all. I'm a lot more laid back, and I'm really not very ambitious. I would much rather just read books at home. I'm not. You, you are much more ambitious than I. But yeah, you. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, should I answer that as well? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it was just. I, I just for me. I feel like it's for both of us. Let's okay. We won't. We won't just grill on you. We'll... <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw myself into the fire too. Um, character, I, I would say Elena. Uh, yeah. Um, I won't expand on that. Oh, okay. Okay. Many people. So I, I had like fifty Twitter questions, all asking the same thing: Are you and I ever going to work together again? Who knows? We live. We both live in Toronto. Yes. We both are Canadian. It's a small industry here. Yes. It's highly likely that we will and work together again. I feel like the next time we work together might be on the producing level. Yes. I actually have something for you, too, now that we're talking about it. Okay. I, yes, I, all right. We'll, we'll text after. <laughs> okay. Sonia, Supergirl, uh, underscore 365. What has been both of your favorite things to do to stay busy during quarantine? You're reading. Over, yeah, it is. You? Not really. You have, but you have like these children running around like crazy that you're taking care of. So that takes uh, up some time. Yeah, my, I mean, my niece and nephew, I don't have children. Uh, yeah, I don't need like that. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> just to clarify, <laughs> totally single. Um, yeah, so I've been watching my niece and nephew throughout the week. <laughs> and that, that's, that's been... That's been new for me. That's a lot of, and I'm not using a lot of mental uh, capacity doing this, which I find is really affecting me. Okay. Um, but it's a lot of just keep them going, keep them busy, do their schoolwork, yeah. uh, which my brother-in-law has taken over now, which thank God. Cause, oh, good. Um, but other than that, just like you, like you, you went for a run. I'm trying to just work out when I can. Um, I started writing a, a new film, a short Perfect. film. That's very um, That I would like to... Maybe direct. We'll see. That terrifies me. No, you should we'll do it. it. Um, okay, this is from obviously a fan of yours, Truth Burden. Okay. Has anything taken you by surprise while working on Burden? What's been the most rewarding part of working on the series? Taken me by surprise. Um, I think the closeness of the team from you know, from the writing side to the acting to the crew, it just feels like a really, really tight and 
kind of intimate group, which is really nice. And I actually haven't experienced that before. Um, and I don't know, the ability that we've had to go there with the show, uh, being on the CBC, they're really supportive of just taking issues and looking at them and, and going deep with stuff. Not, so. not shying from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's been really great. And I've also really fallen in love with the character. I just love her. And that's been surprising also. I haven't quite had that experience either. What was surprising about that? I mean, you knew ahead of time you were an EP on it. Yeah. You knew the character going in. Did the falling in love with her happen after a certain amount of seasons? Like, what was that moment of? She's just changed so much. Like working in serialized TV is so fun because you can take a character and they can evolve. And normally with TV that I've done anyway, the characters generally stay mostly the same and they are put into circumstances and you see them behave differently, but they're the same people from beginning to end. And the show, she's really evolved. The craziest things have happened to her and I've been able to see and kind of choose how she'll react and evolve through those things. And, yeah, yeah. and it, it feels like a more intimate process of getting to know somebody than okay. the, you know, just running around being a cop or something. Right, right. Okay, that, that's great. I, I don't think I've really, I haven't had that experience yet, I don't think. So look forward to maybe having that one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, Mary G underscore Y is this, there's two more. What character path would you girls have chosen if you, if acting hadn't worked out? Career path? Mm -hmm. Laura, you go first. God damn it. Um, I was, I went to York University for psychology. I think I would have been somewhere in that field, yes. um, if not that writing. But I've always been interested in, in human nature, and which is why that one book you had told me about, uh, Gene. Um, the Gene? The Gene. This is like an ad right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that really uh, I was really excited about. So, yeah. That one, have you read? Oh, have you read? Um, you must have read Sapiens. No. Mm. You'd also love this guy. So that was a really scary response. Sorry, guys. Okay, bye. Yeah, really great. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get you to send that. This one's really good. Um, anyway, yeah, similar to you, uh, uh, um, I, I was planning to go into psychology. Huh. Um, yeah, I was interested in uh, criminal psychology, which I don't know what I was thinking, but I think a lot of it was about trying to understand how people think right. that I don't understand. And that's why I loved acting. I mean, it's you very it. similar to you. Yeah, 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 where I didn't realize that. Yeah, because one of the things that I love about what I studied is when I take on a character, I can try to figure out the, the, the reasoning behind. Like if I'm playing a serial killer, I can look back at yeah. the things that, you know. So it, it makes sense that a lot of actors probably were interested in psychology and still are. And do you watch any of those crime shows because you're interested in, like, the documentaries? I, some of them. I don't know. I, what did I watch recently? There was one recently that I... Please don't say Tiger King. No. I'm so sick of that one. <laughs> so sad. I know. How they treat the animals and where people, the places people get to, I just. Um, Although the, char the characters were interesting character studies. Yes, but they're real humans. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, when I was like in 12th grade, I liked CSI. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Which is not an accurate representation of that kind of work. But I was young and it was, it was fun and illustrated something, but I, I'll read a lot. There's, there's a class that Queens does, a psych class that is an abnormal psychology class that mm -hmm. I'm going to take at some point, which will be really interesting. You, you haven't taken it? You, you Not yet, it? no. It's all timing, right? I've got to right. figure out when I can take certain classes. 
God, I need to be more like you. Okay. You um, don't. <laughs> Gary Robson, seven six. Okay. Uh, where would you both like to be in five years? And would you both like to be, become a director at any point? Laura wants to direct, but she's scared. Yes. <laughs> it's like two little six-year-old girls, and you're putting me on the spot. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it scares me, which we talked about, which is why I should probably try. Yeah, you should. And if you, you've got a good team of people around you. I think that's a big part of it is having a great team, someone who can help you prep. And but if you've got a great DP and... Yeah, I know what DP I would use. And I know um, Jessica Patel, who directed my short. I have her kind of hold yeah. my hand through the prep process. And, and you love photography. You have a good sense of, like, framing. I mean, I think you would, I think you would love it. Um, yeah. I don't want to direct. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's OK. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but five years. It's funny, I feel like I haven't done a lot of goal work in a while but I'd like to be producing I really would that'd be great mm -hmm. to be well, developing and making uh, yeah I'd like to be doing that I think at this point I am but I'm still learning I want to be at a point in the next five years where I could do it on my own right yeah okay yeah and I think that there's a lot of pressure on women in film and television to feel like they are supposed to produce and direct if they are actresses at the, this point it's like a triple threat scenario where it's almost like overcompensating like well I, I need to do all of these things that's that's a part of what being in this industry is that's expected of me I mean when I was on Bitten um it didn't even cross my mind to direct because I didn't see female directors in front of me it, yeah it, and and now I wish I had because I had that crew around me that would have been there to support me while I directed. that would have been a great time to do it yeah but so I'm picking pass. myself about that um so that's the end of the Twitter questions do you want to try to jump into this thing that I haven't done before let's see it's supposed to come up oh. I'm gonna try to proofread them so there's no weird ones okay good we don't want um, weird questions oh this one's just the funny one <laughs> Can you see that? No, I can't see any. Where am I supposed to look? Oh, I don't understand why it didn't show up. Uh, okay, it says, uh, what's your go-to order at Tim Hortons? I am from Vancouver. We <laughs> aren't a Timmy's place. Yes. Frankly. Yes. You? <laughs> uh, uh, everything bagel, urban garlic, cream cheese. Ooh, yummy. Um, Hi, Jill. Oh. Can you, wait, who, which Jill? Jill Carter. Hi, Jill Carter. <laughs> Speaking of uh, female directors. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm looking at, I'm trying to like proofread these because obviously people get weird. Yes. Um, oh, okay, here's a Vancouver one for you. Okay. Can you, you can't see these? I don't, I don't know, know where I'm supposed, I'm supposed to look somewhere? No, <laughs> it's like behind the camera. <laughs> no, it's supposed to pop up on your screen. Uh, okay. What were your favorite restaurants to eat at in Vancouver? Vidges. They have this really yummy um, um, jackfruit dish that I love. Mm -hmm. um, back when I ate meat, they have yummy meat dishes. Where else did I love to eat? Tojo's I used to really like going to. Oh, I think I went to Tojo's. I'm sure you did. Um, why is my brain not thinking of Vancouver restaurants? Because I don't live there anymore. That's okay. Um, it's just really frustrating me that I can't figure out how to show you these questions. Um, oh, there's one question I won't be sharing. Um, <laughs> are you about to go to be less gross? <laughs> yes, please. Are you about to? You're going to Paris soon. Depends. Okay, yeah, everything's... Um, November's when they have it scheduled. Theoretically, November will be better for us, but it sounds like this is going to be going on for a while for everybody. So I don't know what travel's going to be like come fall. Yeah, most of the conventions we've lined up are on standby. Um, okay, here's one. What advice do you have for someone trying to get into the industry in Canada in their 30s? Um, well, my first advice is always train, which is something I never did, um, but get some training. And then I 
don't know. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard when you didn't go through the process. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how you get auditions when I don't. Do you know, Laura? Nope. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's the same. I didn't necessarily. I didn't go to school for acting. I, I took courses on my own or yeah. classes. Um, but I mean, I, I started out doing background work here in, in Toronto. I would right. say that's a great way to learn the set environment and, and how it works. Um, so you, you start off doing background work and study and, you know, get a background agent and then you just stick with it. It's a yeah, time. Business. Probably audition for theater and just start doing everything you can. Right. It, it is a hard business. business. It is. It is. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'm supposed to be able to show these to you. Uh, yeah, I'm doing something wrong. No, someone just told me how to do this and clearly. What is the character show in the movie? Okay. Um, what is a character from a show or movie book that you would want to portray on screen? This is from Super 7 Red. Okay. Do you have one in mind right away? Oh, hold on. Tanner, tap the question. I am. Oh. I am. Like the question box or the ones that like, are- Do I have to tap the question? No. No, I don't uh, touch anything? What are they doing? There's like um, the little sendy thing, but I'm not supposed to send it. Yeah, anything. no, there's like a question box here, and uh, I see this the the scroll of people and the hearty hearts on the side. Yes, but I'm supposed to be able to double tap something. There's no question. I, Someone told me to click the question box, like with a question, but I don't see a question anywhere. Oh, you have to tap the question. Yeah, I have to tap the question, but I don't know where the question is. You, you don't see a little question box beside the little uh, male <laughs> thing, thing a person with little things on their head? Yeah, and then to the left of that, you see the letter? Yeah, I see the, like, yeah. paper plane. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no question. Huh. I see okay. a comment box. It says Kristen. Okay. Is it this box? No, nope, that's not the box. <laughs> I love that every time I do a live with someone, this is what ends up happening. Really? Yeah. Right Anybody's... side question mark. Okay, but guys, I can't see a right side question mark. Does it scroll? I don't know. You'll have to just ask the question. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm not good at this. Sorry. Okay, so any of, uh, someone said, is there any advice for people struggling right now? I'm assuming they're, they're mm. talking in terms of quarantining and self-isolation. Well, it's a really hard time. And I, I'm very, I feel very privileged in that I have a home to live in and, and I, have a job that, although doesn't exist currently, is in an industry that we'll probably pick up pretty quickly once we're back. Mm -hmm. I don't. I. I don't know. I mean, I. It's hard to. I know you can't. It all feels so trite. I think the thing is, it all feels trite, and I feel like there needs to be practical things for people. And luckily, in Canada and in the U.S., from what I can tell, there's a lot of support available um financially and otherwise mm -hmm. but, i don't know yeah. <laughs> part of it is knowing that this will end i don't know what the end looks like and i don't know what it looks like on the other side of that end yeah i, I think end. that's what people struggle with is not <clears throat> having a firm light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. i think we all know that this is going to go on for quite a while yeah um and the government is just slowly pushing it so that they don't give us like a September date and we yeah. don't to panic. Um, but yeah. Uh, there's 99 questions. Oh my God. <laughs> I won't do them all. I know I have to let you go soon. Um, best memory from your Smallville days. 
Honestly, hanging out in the hair and makeup trailer with the ladies it was always my favorite time. Like yeah. sitting with back in the olden times with Natalie and then with Tina and just being there with people and hanging out. I think those were my favorite memories. I really wish that back in the day I had a chance to know you better. And, and yeah, me too. Not even just scenes, but like being the hair and makeup at the same time. We just never, <laughs> you know, I was so nervous coming on to the show and to like meet you guys because I had obviously watched and mm -hmm. I just wanted to fit in. And it's funny because then I ended up just have like, like a culture. Voice. Like we didn't have a, like the cast wasn't a, like a cohesive unit. Everyone just came to work and left. And that was kind of what it was like. There were a few friendships here and there, but like, I didn't, I didn't hang out with Tom. Tom came to work and went home. Like I was so yeah. busy. Like Michael went back to LA whenever he was done shooting. Mm -hmm. They just weren't people that, I mean, I developed friendships with people as afterward, like Erica and I became friends after you and I have developed a relationship after. Um, but yeah, it was like a funny thing because other casts, seem to have a bit more of a yeah I know what you know it's weird yeah and I, I I crave that I mean you have that now on Burden mm -hmm. but um I think I expected that going into Smallville and then but I was also so nervous I just hermited when like yeah. I wasn't at work in a new city so um but it's been great getting to know you and Erica post yeah you know in our off time <laughs> Next question that you can't see. Um, it's my own fault, probably. I should update my phone or something. Uh, what's one of your all-time favorite movies? I mean, mine is always The Princess Bride. It really is. I I love it. It makes me laugh. I think it's hopeful and cynical enough for me to feel satisfied. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Moving on. Uh, any, <clears throat> oh, are you listening to any podcasts? Are you a podcast girl? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I love Hidden Brain, which you would love too. Have you not listened to it? No, Hidden hidden Brain? Yeah. It's really good. But pen to write this down. Okay. Yeah. It's like, I mean, kind of self-explanatory, but it's got lots of psychology, lots of science. It's really, really good. Okay. Um, I like Invisibilia. Uh, I listen to the Daily Daily, which is just the most depressing thing ever in the world, um, but I love it. I, I okay, because I mostly listen to murder podcasts. Does that make sense? <laughs> Don't know what that means about my... No, that's... Audience. People love that. <clears throat> the last one I listened to was uh, the Hart family story. And they just came out on Netflix with the documentary um, Thread of Deceit. Oh, I don't know it. Yeah, it's, it's a sad story. I don't know why I'm talking about it. Uh, let's move on. Um, so what are you currently filming? Well, neither one of us are working currently because... This is what we're filming right now. This is what we're filming. <laughs> this is our new talk show. Yes. Um, <laughs> Okay, so let's, I think I've got the majority of those questions done. I've, I mean, not at all, but I've scrolled through them. And there's nothing really new. or Nothing not. new, a little repetitive. So we can move on to um, just chatting or do the speed round if you'd let's like. Let's do the speed round. Even though I'm really bad at these, I will tell you ahead of time. I'm really bad at answering things quickly. Okay. Well, you don't have to. I mean, some of I'll these. I'll pass if I have to. You do what you do, you, boo. <laughs> okay. You can expand on these. There's no time frame. Okay. Although I did tell you 30 minutes and it's, it's, been, it's been 30 minutes or so, yeah. <clears throat> what color is your toothbrush? Um, I think they're, mo I've got those like. <laughs> Fast one, but you know what? So it's got mine has a little blue plastic thing, so I know that it's mine. A balloon? Blue. Blue. Oh, blue. I needed it to two syllables instead of one. You got confused. A so. blue. Copy. A blue. 
Okay. Yeah, you're not going to be a speed round girl. Um, if a movie was made of your life, what genre would it be? Comedy? No. I don't know. Yeah, comedy question mark. Okay, that's fine. Uh, if you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would that be? Um, to a restaurant? Anyone in particular? Any kind of food? Ooh, there's a great one um, in my neighborhood. You don't have to say it because <laughs> yes. let's pretend. But it's, it's Italian food, but it's like beautiful handmade pasta and it's delicious. You're very interpretive dancing when you explain things. <laughs> what? I don't remember where we even were during a convention, but you and Erica and I, and uh, we all went out to dinner and yeah. I had that drink. Oh, we all had yeah. it was it was the it was the New Orleans drink. Oh, that's right. The was it a Sazerac? Yes, I think. Yes, it was very warm and yeah, it, Christmassy. Yes, it's an intense bevy. I haven't I, had one since then. <laughs> I have not either. I think some of us at the table had more than one. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Um, <laughs> what is one thing that annoys you the most? Um, people not taking other people into consideration <laughs> drives me batty. Um, you can expand on that if you'd like, or we can move on. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> um, I took you into consideration there and asked if you wanted to. Thank you, Laura. Not. You're welcome. Do you have any weird quirks? Probably. I have, I touched my hair. She's cueing me. I do interpretive <laughs> dance when I'm talking. Um, I I change words like "baloo" into multiple syllables, or I'll Google them up so they sound weird. Mm -hmm. But not on set, not when you're in character, just in your no, just me personal life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm learning so much right now. Um, so when you dance, oh no. When I dance, I look like. <laughs> when I dance, I look like. Um, my first thought was like a bird. <laughs> you know, not like a. Do you have a certain type of bird in mind? Because um, baseball. Well, yeah. Birds are graceful, but also weird. So they do like graceful moves and then they're like kind of jerky. I, I don't know. I, I don't know a specific bird I'm thinking of. We'll just let people use their imagination yes. based yes. on like this, that, that the movement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the most interesting thing you have heard this week? It's not a herd because I haven't really been, I've more been reading stuff, but at school, for school, I had to do a bunch of research into um, the ape learning studies of the 70s and 80s. And it was fascinating to like read the debates between the two sides, the side that believes that, you know, they're the apes in their research had learned language and those who thought it was just um, mimicry or whatever, and sign they went back or hmm? sign language. Yes, sign language. yeah, not spoken language, sign language. Um, but they would they went back and forth in this really intense way on uh, in the New York Review of Books, and I thought that was really interesting. Mm. Okay, that that's better than having listened to the news and heard something horrible about the yes. situation. So I think you're doing it right. Um, what scares you the most? Um, practically what scares me the most is being in big groups of people or being the center of attention when there's lots of people around, unless it's on set and then I feel comfortable. I kind of know my place there, mm -hmm. but. And you're uh, also portraying someone else. Yeah. Set. Yeah. And I, I think if I know my role, I feel much more comfortable, but if I don't understand what, what like parties and stuff, I feel really uncomfortable because I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You're a wallflower. Yes. Yes. Um, so conventions, you and I, I think are in the same boat in that we try our best and it takes a lot of energy and we almost have to put on a different hat to be there and be mm -hmm. present and then you need a lot of alone time afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. 
Um, what is the first thing you notice about the opposite sex? Kindness. That's nice. <laughs> oh God, that's, that's nice. nice. <laughs> uh, where are we at? Okay. Um, there's just, these are all off Google. Um, so morning, noon, or night? Morning. Morning. Okay. For whatever. Um, do you, do you have a nickname? My kid friends call me KK or Auntie KK, mm -hmm. but I don't think I have any nicknames. As a grown up? Yeah. Okay. I don't, people, I mean, I don't know what that says about me. Most people call me Kristen. That doesn't say anything about you. That's totally fine. Do you have a nickname? N no, I mean, Vandy, but that's just... Yeah. That's, that's not really a nickname. I guess yeah. not. It's like calling someone by their last name. It's very... Yeah. Patrick Warburton, I worked with um, on TED, and he just started calling me Vandykins. Um, and I called him... His was Patty Warbucks. Like Patty Warbucks. <laughs> yes. So that's where that came from, if anyone you cares. Like I'm sure they don't. Um, do you... Okay, so what... Mot we've got three more, and then okay. three. Bam, 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 bam. What motivates you? What motivates me? Uh, um, curiosity? Curiosity. That's, that's a good one. That's a good answer. Um, last thing you recall Googling? I haven't Googled anything today yet. Uh, <laughs> honestly, this is going to be so boring for everyone. I've been really working on this silly ape language research, so it had to do with those studies. <laughs> on Google Scholar. There's Google Scholar. I didn't know about that until recently. So. Okay. I don't know about that ever. Okay. So you Googled something that you were studying. Correct. Okay. Um, last question, which I think is the most important one. Oh, okay. You might really have to think about this one. Actually, you probably don't need to think about it. I think you know the answer. Okay. Supergirl or Superman? Supergirl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like direct you down that path. <laughs> Not at all. No. Um, okay, so I don't want to take up any more of your time. Okay. Do you want to talk, talk about anything else before you go or discuss? No, I mean, thanks for hanging project. out with us, you guys. There's a lot of you. Holy crap. Um, there's 1,700 on here right now. Yeah. Uh, I hope we didn't bore you too much. No. Um, <laughs> I still see, I see 99 questions in the question box, so I'm so sorry. Uh, Hope we answered you know, some of your questions. A lot of them are repetitive ones, so. Yeah. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Isn't she awesome? <laughs> are you starting a show? Is this like your new thing? The live Instagram show? My um, no, Laura? this is mostly out of like meeting adults conversation. Oh. And <laughs> needing to get the brain working again because it, it, it hasn't been. But well, anytime. Yeah, I appreciate. Also, you don't it. have to do it in front of everyone else. Exactly. I just thought yeah. that you guys would appreciate this, and um, and you and I can. Yeah. We'll text after because yeah. Okay. Yes, we've got a couple things to talk about. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, have a good day. Yeah. You too. Bye, Thanks guys. For joining Stay us. Safe. Take care of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm so sorry I couldn't get to your questions. I mean, I, I looked at them. I just, I was supposed to be able to share them with her. I don't know. But that was fun. She's awesome. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to try to post this now for you guys so you can continue to watch it. Or if you're watching for the first time, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope everyone has a great day and I'm sorry I didn't get to all your questions, but thanks for tuning in. Bye.